Hello, RC fans, Racing 393, part two of my um, unnecessarily expensive Grasshopper Hop Up build. Um, so far, a quick tally up, and it is very quick off the top of my head, I have spent over $350 on a $125 car, which had everything with it anyway in the kit, and we haven't used hardly any of it. Some of it we have, like the, the gearbox gears and the, the axles at the back. At the moment, I've used um, the front wishbones and the steering um, track rods, the, the basic wiry ones, which aren't very good anyway, but they are on the car. Uh, so it's a completely, I mean, people have done this. I mean, I'm surprised. Um, I, I think the computer must, I don't know, read my mind or, or Facebook perhaps are being monitored in the background by, the, you know, the aliens or something. I don't know, but I've been thinking of doing this and I haven't necessarily, uh, I haven't definitely haven't searched for it. Um, I think I searched on Google about grasshopper bits and pieces so that's probably how it's come up but loads and loads of people have now been inquiring amongst groups and forums and one thing or another about the grasshopper i can't believe it up until the point when i was thinking about it and maybe searched there was nothing and now you can understand like google ads and you know pages which go on your on your case or your what are they cookies or something so it kind of diverts you to perhaps what you were searching for um but facebook i definitely haven't been searching on facebook only thinking about it so anyway there's a lot of grasshopper stuff going on online at this point of uh, the videos aren't live they're sort of way way i'm sort of filming now but they're way ahead of myself so um but anyway we're on part two uh and we in this video <clears throat> we get the the servo mounted and the Kimbra uh, what's it called servo saver installed. Now that wasn't as easy as it should have been. I, what it I had or well, got a two or three Kimbra servos for the 112 LMP car, one that come with the kit. Uh, with the Schumacher one, the, the uh, Clips 4 that I've got. So it's got a much smaller spline. And it's new. So you built it from the kit and that pinged apart. I've got to be doing something wrong. Um, even someone at a, a BRCA race meeting, or was it a club meeting? I think it was the BRCA. No, it wasn't. It was a club meeting in, in Eastbourne. Uh, and they couldn't fix it. So they gave me another one. I've since bought another one for the LMP12 and haven't used that one. So I haven't touched it. So it hasn't done anything wrong. It hasn't sprung apart. I bought another Kimbra 25 tooth. I think it's 25 tooth servo saver for the grasshopper. Because um, it didn't have the right spline on it. So I took it apart. I sort of, you can't really see where it comes off. It's almost, it's almost invisible. But I used a sort of a standing knife and just sort of pinged it apart. And as I did that, it went ping into like, four annoying pieces and it took ages i don't think it's a hundred percent but it is back on the car um i don't know what it is i'm doing wrong i mean i on other videos i hear people talking about the kimbra servo saver so they they must be used but why don't anyone get any problems like i do that's two now two have done that so it's purely something i'm doing i think so anyway we put that on we've got the servo on um we got the wheels that went on like you can see there the picture of the front wheels are exactly like that but slightly smaller and i had problems with them and upon investigation it was i had to drill out the hole in the wheel so it spins on the spindle but the hex hardware that i've got so it allows me to run hex wheels fitments on the front there's a bit of play um, 
I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about that. Uh, I'll, it, it'll be all right, I think, for now. It's not gonna be a, a it's not gonna be a race car, is it? So that's fine. I've got some different stubs to fit on the front of this, which I've ordered. They're from the Midnight Midnight Pumpkin or the Lunchbox. They've got because they've got bigger wheels. They have a slightly longer stub axle, uh, so I can run these wheels on the front, but space them out so they're slightly wider. I have ordered some aluminium aluminium uh, bottom wishbones so we've got the start stand standard Puh. the standard kit ones on the moment now the bot the kit is still pretty much complete um so i am going to plan to build a standard grasshopper i might have to buy a few bits and pieces and fit the same electrics i've got in this on that one and we're going to see which one is best i'm not sure when and how i'm going to do that because the electrics are like 125 quid so 145 dollars or something like that um, i need two of them so um yeah who knows i need to uh work harder and longer i think so that's where we're at so that's what this video is about let me know what you think. Um, I know lots of people, like I said, have done this. There's lots of people that wouldn't do it. And like I said, right from the from the word go, I am not a grasshopper fan. I don't particularly like it. I like this one, but I'm not a grasshopper fan. I wouldn't necessarily buy one because I want a radio control car. But my understanding of the importance of that timeline and particularly then with Tamiya and how it brought people into the hobby so you know swings and roundabouts as we say anyway i hope you enjoyed the video of this part two as i get my words out and i'll see you soon bye for now okay right we're back on the grasshopper um, really cold. Three degrees, barely. Heat is on. I'm cold. And I'm having real problems. <laughs> I bought a Kimbra um, servo saver. Amongst some other bits and pieces which are sort of scattered around here for the grasshopper. And whilst changing the servo saver... Um, the bit that goes onto the servo horn, uh, 25 teeth, I think, is what this is. It all pinged apart. I, I don't know what it is with these servo savers, but I'm having, I always get problems like that. So I'm going to try and put it back together. I almost did it yesterday and it pinged off and the spring went everywhere. Um, but I don't intend to film this um, I mean this is the original servo saver here so it might be a I might I might actually still use that <laughs> if I get too much trouble so I've got to put the you know the other bits in here like the spring um, and, and that bit I think goes on and then that one of these will go onto the back of the servo so I think I'll be honest that's the way I'm probably going to go but I'm going to um, give this a go first and then go from there really um, then I'll tell you about what I've done on here so I've actually managed to fit the wheels on properly and I'll tell you how I've done that I've actually bought some other wheels here as a matter of so I thought the problem wasn't what I thought it was but these were still fit they're slightly bigger than them but um, I suppose you know, they could even go on the back but yeah, they're sort of off-road type ones you see that but they'll come in handy on other things anyway so they're only about like 10 pounds 15 15 dollars or something like that right let me sort this out let me have a go at this <coughs> and then I'll, I'll be i'll come back and then you'll see what i've eventually done so after about i don't know an hour <laughs> it's it's not in but i've got the servo horn on I've got to figure a way out now of putting the servo on. Um, 
it is pretty straightforward. I've just got to sort of adjust all the amounts. Oh, I don't think that amount there goes particularly well there, but I'm going to screw this on, fix it down, mount it, and then I'll be back with a burp. There's something to show you, I expect. Here is a and getting their almost completed grasshopper completely over the top hop up hopper <laughs> so um, I've got a, just a standard servo in there at the moment <clears throat> as you can see nothing spectacular um, I did get the Kimbra servo saver back on back together that took an hour as I've said I don't know if I said it but I did um, I've got a battery in there which is just a it can be the battery I could use a 2S just to see if it fits um, the other thing now I need to fit on here I think is a form of tray that goes over here I think you, you can get one that sort of flips up and down because there's no, I've got nowhere to put any other electronics, receiver and speed controller. Um, that can go and get plugged in. There's not much room down this end, the front, because it's um, this, this body shell fits too close. Uh, so I, um, hmm. a little bit of an oversight, I think. I mean, there's room. I mean, it's something where the, where the, you know, where this bit goes. There's plenty of room there. So I might need to put something that goes across the chassis. That's removable. <clears throat> I think you can get an aftermarket plate which fits on here. I'll have to have a look at one of them. I'm not quite sure how that would fit on there though. The front does need setting up a little bit. I've got some other bits coming. I've got some. I did go for some aluminium bottom wishbones. Uh, they're not here yet. And I've also got some pumpkin. What is it? Uh, is it the pumpkin or that other thing? I can't remember what it's called now. But anyway, longer are the lunchbox, longer stub axles, so it widens the front a little bit. Suspension wise, yeah, it is okay. That's the front, so it's not it's better than stock. Back is good. There's a bit of weight in there. We've got to get the motor, receiver, speed controller. So that's that's the next thing. Battery I've got in there is one of these, so nothing. Well, it's 5,000 milliamp hour. 2S, 7.2 volt. It's in storage charge at the moment, so it'll be alright for a bit. Um, ooh, tired. Oh, God. Let's have a little bit of a close up again. So, what do you think? I mean, I think it looks awesome, but I think it's a bit, well, it is a bit of overkill, but it's just something I wanted to do. And I thought, well, I might as well film it. <laughs> well, I've done it anyway. And it's really smooth. Front wheels are not quite pointing straight. There's a lot of flop in here as well, which is... I know what it is to do with the hex front wheels adapters. So, um... Hmm. Um, yeah, so the next... <sighs> the next steps are... Yeah, electronics. I was going to paint the body shell. I won't leave it white. It will probably be box art for now. So I'll paint it white, paint the driver. Um, put the fronts on there, so the wishbones on the front and the longer stubs. Figure out some sort of plate that goes over here. 
because on the original grasshopper the battery goes underneath but of course we can't do that on this one probably at the end of the these series of videos I'll <coughs> quickly top up roughly what it's cost me but you can probably work it out yourself anyway uh, yeah. not bad <sighs> Cut that yawning out. Let me know what you think. Um, and I'll see you, well, it's not the end of the video, but I'll see you when I've got some bits and pieces to continue with this part two. Right, so, got as far as I can on this <clears throat> at the moment. I'm not going to film this, but may as well. You can see by that it's build up the standard grasshopper. I can't go fully on that because I'm still waiting for some bits for this, but um, we can get it so far. Almost a rolling chassis. I mean, this is a. I bought the gears for the gearbox, and I just put bearings in it. So I'm not going to. I'm not going to film this process. There's no point. Um, but I might film putting the anti-roll bar on or something, on the rear one, which wouldn't fit on this aluminium one because of these webbings. So I might film that bit. Um, but anyway, let me crack on with that. I'll be back and I've done a bit more. I just thought I'd just pause halfway through um, to show you the anti-roll bar that only fits the standard grasshopper, not the new rear axle gearbox assembly so yeah it, it bolts straight on dead easy didn't have any instructions with it but didn't really need them but um, now I can't really go much further other than put the rear wheels on so, so I'm waiting for wishbones for this aluminium and then the wishbones for this one which are f the standard ones to put on here um, yeah, so for me, I'm going to have to little wait a bit, but I'm going to put the wheels and tyres on, the back ones. And I'm going to use the, these sort of aluminium billet hubs, not hexes. Uh, yeah, it's gone together really nice, as you'd expect, to be honest. Yeah, I like that. Put marine grease in the back shocks, the friction shocks. Uh, there we go. I mean, yeah, grasshopper shocks, aren't they? So, hmm, okay. Right, let me crack on with the wheels and I'll uh, be back in a minute. Here we go. Well, partly. <laughs> there we go. Yep. In typical grasshopper fashion. Um, it is nice and smooth. There's more oil in this one, um, grease. There's a bit more resistance there than what this one is. This one's, um, you can probably just see that in the background. It's free. It's a super free diff. Not ideal where this one just turns together. But um, yeah. Like I say, it's got the anti roll bar on the back. That's the sort of the wheelie bar bit. So you can put a wheelie bar on there. Stop it sort of lifting up, I suppose. But hmm. have some weight in there yet so the motor it might not be quite as bouncy but I'm waiting for the front wishbones um, unless unless I order some basic ones and cut because these won't be ready oh the, the aluminium ones not due till a few weeks so I'm a little bit stuck at the minute and the, and the front stubs the extended stubs Again, they're way off as well, so. <sighs> Buy one grasshopper, build two. 
you go. So um, I'll see you soon. Um, for me, it'd be days, weeks. For you, it'd be in a minute. Whilst I'm waiting for bits, I thought we'd do a little bit of the the body shell. I'll uh, I'll go through it with more detail once I get other once I get it done and the chassis the chassis are nearer completion. Looks alright. So I thought I would <clears throat> just fill this bit of the video in with uh, a painted body shell. And I didn't go the standard white that was one, well, it's just what the normal white is, you know, it's what the body shell just comes in white. I've actually used TS7 Racing White, appropriately named, and then I kind of went over it, which you can just see in the light here, you might not see it on the camera. Clear pearl. To give it a bit of a sheen. Um, that there is kind of, doesn't really show up on the camera that well here, but that's kind of the original white. There's a bit of overspray there with some primer, but, but you can see here, it, Again, it doesn't might not show on the camera, but it does actually look a lot better. Um, I've done the black roll cage, and I've also filled the back, that bit there in black as well. A few, one more bit I've got to put on this. Um, in front, you can see the front sort of uh, spotlights, which I've kind of done black, and then I've, I've mucked up the black. That's why I put a red stripe around it, pinstripe. But the white is kind of how the body shell is, if you see what I mean. So I think I might try you I might try a little bit of a close up uh with the other camera to see if it comes up any different. You'd have to forgive me because it's handheld. Uh don't know what the sound is gonna be like. But I'm kind of I can't go too close because it goes this is not a macro lens or nothing like that. So if it shows up the the pearl or anything, <laughs> to be honest, what do you think? <coughs> I'm off the camera straight. Sorry. Let's sort of look on the front. You can probably see the lights were that white, and the shell is a different shade. And inside, it's different again. I'll try and hold it up to the light if I can. So that's that's the inside, and for information purposes, there's the two chassis waiting for some bits, um, which haven't arrived. So, off camera, I'm going to work on that, and it'll just be the one that screws into the top there, you know. So. Yeah. Right, let me crack on. That's how I prep my crash helmets. If you're interested, I'm just going to rub that down <clears throat> and spray it. So, yeah, I'll come back when that's done. Right, um, just working it again. Just waiting for that bit there to dry. I said I'll be back when it's done. It's not done, but I'm back. Um, I painted the top half of the body. I've got to add some detail on that, like the belts, maybe a little bit of shading, nothing much. It's going to be screwed into the top. Um, on the roof, you know how it goes on the old uh, hopping grass car. Um, yeah, it's a bit time consuming, as in waiting for things to. Uh, you know, dot, dry, go off, clean brushes. I'm still waiting for bits, mainly from China. It's going to take ages, not ages, but longer than I anticipated 
to get the rest of the cars up and running. Well, the rest of the cars, the other two grasshoppers, the standard and the aluminium one. There's bits on one I need on the other, but I can't get that until I've got bits. So, yeah, so I'm gonna wait for this. Wait for Fred there to dry. You can see, look. I'm just trying to see what the macro lens is like. Can you see that? It sort of sinks in at the back there, doesn't it? But I've got rid of the seam. It's just that bit there. So I've got to wait for that to go off. I mean, fortunately, it's only modelling filler. It goes off really quickly. And then I can... Know, put it back on, put it onto the body, and put it put it in the car. Um, yes, right. I will, I will be back, as someone famous used to say. Driver figure uh, done. It's not great. <laughs> I'm not very good at it. You know, looks all right. Still loads more to do. <clears throat> Surprisingly, how well it's come out for a grasshopper. For I didn't want to buy one attitude. Don't buy a grasshopper. But still waiting for bits uh, but yeah looks right what do you think I've hidden the screw up there with the uh, golf you can see that that golf sticker bit of orange because I've got the guy orange that was by accident to be honest Right, can't believe this is still part two, it's going forever. Um, yeah, I'm still waiting for bits, so uh, at some point, next few days, I'm sure we'll have them. Get this sitting on all four wheels. Once they're both rolling chassis, the pair of them, so this one and the one in the background here you can't quite see, this, the, the aluminium one. That will be the part two and then part three will be the installation of the electronics, which is the same on both. Um, tire writing, I'd like to do that as well. But yeah, I'll see you in a bit. So I know I, I said I'd be, I'd complete all this before I come back on. Um, yeah, I'm just going to show you, I've got all the bits in here now. So. Uh, aluminium bottom arms extended stubs and like a battery tray of uh, fixing thing but so I'll get this one done and then it'll allow me to transfer the bits off this onto the standard one build that up and then we'll have two uh, rolling chassis to show you at the end uh, and that will conclude this part of the video and then I'll uh, summarise what I'm going to do for the next part um, it's taken quite a while to get to this stage actually because you know, get ordering stuff just takes bloody ages but anyway we're kind of here now so I'm going to crack on I'll be back when they're done might as well show you briefly that's the top carbon fibre battery stay um, looks right I'll show a close up later. Got these two with it as well. I don't know what they are. I'll probably look it up. So by the time you see the video, I may have found out what they are. So, yeah, looks all right. It's got a pin there, I've got a body pin. Yeah, all good. Um, front suspension now. Quick look. So, pretty much a rolling chassis now. And probably 400 pounds in <laughs> that's ridiculous 
looks all right, but it's not really a grasshopper. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, I'll go through it in detail once the other one's done. <laughs> if you're interested. Here we are, we're done. Standard. A ridiculously hopped up hopper. Um, I mean, you can see here with the. I'll show you a close up in a minute with the other camera. So, uh, it took a while to do. Um, there was a few upgrades I've done on the original hopper. <coughs> uh, the other hopper's been pretty much another car completely. So, it's not so much about hopping up the original. It was more of a case of buying two hoppers. One which is probably a little over standard price because of the upgrades I have got on it and then an out and out stupidly priced aluminium or for you Americans uh, aluminium chassis which I'll show you a, a close up I think with the other camera um, but I'll do, I'll do a bit on here Yeah, you know what a grasshopper is grasshopper is a grasshopper uh, standard as it is on the front any difference with this one is I've put an anti-roll bar on the back, a couple of bling, uh, some different type of axle fixings at the on the wheel. I don't even see it through the wheel, to be honest. I'm sure you can see that. You might see it on there, but it's pretty standard. Ready for the electrics. So they're going to have separate electrics, not the same. Well, as in the same electrics, but two of them. And here's the. Uh, hopped up probably getting on for nearly oh I don't know 300 pound by the time we've added it all together which is about probably close 400 dollars <laughs> that's ridiculous anyway let me um, let me show you a bit of a close up uh, I'll take the shell off and we'll, we'll do a little a little scooter round you have to excuse the uh, handheldness of it all, but um, I need to move stuff out of the way <coughs> so I can work. So standard grasshopper, you know what that looks like. It's got high-speed bearings on it. That makes a difference. Um, rear anti-roll bar um, enables like a wheelie bar, but I haven't got the the, the wheel wheelie wheel on there. It's really smooth actually. Like really smooth. Um, it's got a couple of hop ups on there, like the where you put oil or whatever into the gearbox, and a heat sink for the motor that I originally going to put on it, or would I get round to doing it? Um, the rear shocks haven't come out too bad. I mean, they're, it doesn't hop as much. The fronts are terrible. Standard. I mean, they're, it's higher, much higher at the front than what the other one is. But you know what a grasshopper's like in the day. What's this cost me then? But hundred and I think it was like nine eighty-five pounds. I bought one without electronics in it, but I bought things for it since. Um, eighty-five plus all the various blingy bits. I don't know. It's probably about one hundred and twenty-five pound so far. Uh, that'd be about one hundred and hundred and sixty-five dollars. So that's that one. This is the uh, stupidly expensive £300 at least grass offer. So $400 and $460. <laughs> it's mental. Anyway, that's the body shell. That's the driver. These wheels I actually already had, actually. So, but it's certainly it's much better the suspension if I drop this one as you see hops a little bit as you expect and this is a close up of the actual chassis it's got the same servo in it's got the battery retainer strap carbon fibre it might be fake but it looks like carbon fibre some red bling 
um, a stupidly expensive gearbox uh, RC pieces it's got hex hubs on it sort of red highlighting or accent another sort of aluminum heat sink it's all aluminum aluminum um, it's got a skid plate on the back not too close it gets all out of bloody focus um, there's bars on the inside, I sort of said in the video, I think there's some bars, I didn't know what they were. That's just sort of, um, so the battery doesn't slide back and forth in there, so that's why they're there. Aluminum front bumper and wishbones. Quite nice. So the whole thing is, well, it's... Not, it is a grasshopper, but it's a complete chassis. So we've got that one and that one. I'm, I'm going to do a closing um, in a minute. But I'm hoping we'll get some running video. Well, not I'm hoping we'll do some running videos comparing the two with exactly the same electronics. This one is slightly heavier, but it does work better. I feel super free diff. I can't show you that, but I probably could if I lifted one wheel up like that. I mean, it's probably too free. It's got the same gears in it. Perhaps could do with a little bit of a you know, some, just some thicker grease or more grease put in the gearbox. But there we go. I mean, I think that was a really good build. Although it's it's quite difficult putting bits on cars sometimes because they don't always fit how you expect them to fit. I might as well show that as the traditional grasshopper I think it's kind of on there yeah traditional hopped up which one do you prefer I think I yeah I, I don't think there's gonna be a lot in it as in performance but I do like that one <laughs> but for the price mm, don't know we'll get onto a closing and I'll uh, we'll go from there. Welcome to the end of the video. Uh, and as you can see on the picture, I've sort of put the two grasshoppers up in so you can compare the two sort of face to face, as it were. Um, what do you think? Uh, now, the the purpose of this uh, these videos. This is part two. Um, Part three, as I've said, will be a probably an installation of the electronics and um, like a running video. And the purpose of this was really um, every time I read a forum, listened to a video on YouTube or whatever, the I'm uncomfortable the uh, the person that was talking about a grasshopper, they always said, "Leave them alone. They're iconic." A lot of people's happy childhood memories, and they've rebuilt a grasshopper nowadays as they're a, a, a grown adult, as it were. With perhaps, you know, I'm not. I don't know. I don't know. It's just someone got older with you know family, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and they want to perhaps get back into the hobby. And this brings back, or oh, the top picture, nevertheless, brings back wonderful memories. Now, I'm always striving to do things slightly different and go... I've always been a against-the-grain type of person. Um, I've got good... The problem is I have good ideas in my head and sometimes portraying them out like this doesn't always work. Um, I think it has this time. However, I have totaled up the prices now. Um, I was sort of flitting figures back and forth earlier on in the video and I... I couldn't quite remember what I'd spent and the conversion to dollars. I'm rubbish with that. It doesn't doesn't really matter. I think it's nearly double, isn't it, almost, the dollar? No, no, it's not that. What am I talking about? That's what it was. Um, like 1.2 to the pounds. That's pretty standard. It's, you know, if it's £100, it's like $120 or something. I think it's something like that. So the top picture, um, standard, with a few hop-ups. Um, that cost me so eighty-five pound. Uh, bearings, 
wheelie bar, a bit of aluminium. It's the same body shell. Servo. So I haven't put the other electrics in yet. There's no motor, etc. Um, I'm trying to think. So da -da -da -da. that's probably about in UK money. Uh, about a hundred and twenty-five pounds, which is about a hundred and fifty-five dollars. So the top one, £125, £155-ish dollars. The bottom one, same body shell, um, but there's nothing on that car that uses the original one, apart from the gears. I had to buy gears, that's another thing. The gears in the gearbox on the bottom car is the original gears. Um, High-speed bearings, fully aluminium, aluminium space frame, um, carbon fibre battery mount, widened front track, stupid expensive rear gearbox, um, high speed ceramic bearings, aluminium add-ons. Uh, those wheels and tyres I had, but I've still had to buy them previously. Um, just trying to think, front uh, the front aluminium bumper. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think of the top of my head now. Hex, Hex hardware. So, in total, that I've added it up 345 ish pounds, which is probably nearly close to, nevertheless, $400. I mean, what? Now, I the purpose was to hop it up. My original plan was to hop up the original grasshopper but when you do this you start adding bits on you think well i might as well get that might as well get this get that and eventually you've got a complete kit in bits which isn't the grasshopper and you're nicking a few bits off the original kit like gears which i had to buy um what else did i buy i've got the gears the standard grasshopper, I bought another gearbox because it was some bits I needed and it was in the same tree, so I bought the whole thing. Um, and, and you're left now with two separate cars. Pretty much one is a grasshopper, one looks like a grasshopper. And it'd be interesting to see which one performs the best. Now, the suspension on the bottom one, I can tell you now, performs a lot better. It is heavier. Uh, and that might have an effect on it. The top one, the back or the rear suspension is okay. It's standard, but it actually feels all right. The front is shit, but it always has been on a grasshopper. But who am I to say that that is bad? You know, in the day, <clears throat> it's replicating a 1984, is it? 1984 kit. Back then, I was in my very early teens. So you can sort of work out roughly how old I am. Uh, and there's people around now that reminisce on the old days of RC buying a grasshopper. I was actually even before a grasshopper. So as I said in other videos, I was the SRB gang, uh, Sand Scorcher. Um, I didn't like the grasshopper. I still don't like the grasshopper. I like the bottom one, but for 400, what did I say it was? I figures gone at me head. 345 pounds. What could you buy for 300 and nearly 350 pound kit? What a better one, <laughs> probably. Although in the flesh, it does look awesome. Now, when it's got batteries, electrics, and it's going down the road and maybe down a little bit of a dusty track, I don't know. Maybe it will. It won't be very much a very off-roady with those tyres, but that's what I've got at the moment. Uh, we'll do a speed run on both. Just to see what it will go like. I don't want to wreck them. Um, and they'll probably use the same battery. Uh, so I don't really want to run the batteries out. It'll be a LiPo 2S. Um, I still haven't quite finished uh, the body shell yet. There's a couple of other bits and pieces uh, that I'd like to go on there. <gasps> Excuse me. <sighs> I should edit that out, shouldn't I? Will I? Maybe not. I yawned into the microphone. Uh, what do you think? Give me your thoughts on what I've done. All those, if you're in the camp of don't hop it up, leave it as it is, 380 motor, standard, have 
maximum amount of fun. Let me know your thoughts. If you're in the camp of throw all the shit out, which is pretty much the whole kit, I don't mean to upset people here, um, but pretty much everything, and just buying all the bits separately, costing a fortune, and at the end of the day, is it going to be the same? So £125 or £345 for something that looks better but performs the same. I don't know. It'd be interesting. And that's the whole purpose of this video. Um, I'd like to ask you if you consider subscribing to my channel. That would be absolutely fantastic. I've actually, at the time of this video, uh, 503 or 500 and something, I don't know, 503 or 4 subscribers. I think what I'm lacking is not, I mean, I'm sort of di digressing here a little bit. Um, view time. I need to keep people viewing, but they don't. So, and the whole purpose of this channel isn't to be the YouTuber, to believe it or not. It's actually to document what I'm doing. Because um, I, my dad, who's quite, he's very ill, actually. Um, I don't want to go into that now. But he sometimes watches my videos because he can't get where I am. So, and he's he's not really that interested in RC as such. He's, he's never really been a fan of it, although he did build my first Sand Scorcher back, way back with me. So, But he just likes to listen to what I'm saying because he, I see him nearly every day, but he can't get to where I am, where I live, because it's impossible. So uh, that's, that is maybe not the beginning of the videos, like way back, but certainly as time has gone on, that's my thought process. It kind of gives him a bit of respite on general stuff he can listen to me waffling on um he does say he's watched some of the videos he doesn't watch them all but um, that's the main reason so he watches it uh, it'd be nice for if others watch the videos to get my viewing up that, that would help me on my on my youtube side channel however that's not the reason i'm mainly doing this i'm waffling now so um i'm gonna leave it there this is the end of part two i hope you enjoyed it um, it's going to be both videos. Part one, as you've hopefully watched, is over an hour. Part two will be very close to just under an hour, 50 minutes or so. But I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you for part three in the not too distant future. Thanks for watching and bye for now.